Welcome to another edition of the Recruiting Scoop. I'm Jared Johnson, and we're on the eve of National Signing Day, or at least the early period, the first day of the early period. And boy, this really has become, for all intents and purposes, National Signing Day um, since the advent of the early period in December for college football. Uh, you know, this is such an odd recruiting cycle, just like everything else right now in the world, basically. <clears throat> the crazy thing is that um, this cycle, the coaches, the recruits, us reporters, have been operating under a dead period since March. So all those uh, official visits didn't happen. The summer camps, I mean, you just go down the list. All these things, uh, oh, the, the spring evaluation period, which is really one of the most important periods of recruiting cycle, none of that took place. So this is a really odd, this is a truly unique recruiting cycle for a number of reasons for every program around the country. And Texas Tech is no different. Uh, there's a couple of things to point out, some very interesting twists with Texas Tech's uh, 2021 recruiting class. First of all, there's 11 commits listed on the commit list. Now, I expect nine of the of the 10 high school there's 10 of the 11 guys that are listed on the commitment list are high school guys um D'Amico Rollins the junior college defense alignment I am skeptical that he will end up signing with Texas Tech certainly not um this week not uh Wednesday during the early signing period on December 16th which by the way runs through the 18th the uh 2021 college football uh early signing period so I expect nine, up until Monday, I expected all 10 of the high school guys to sign early with Texas Tech. Now, some things have changed, okay? Obviously, the firing of offensive coordinator David Yost on Monday was followed just minutes behind by not a decommitment by Baron Morton, but it might as well have been in my interpretation of it. Um, he still has Texas Tech listed all over his Twitter, but... Um, he said in a statement that he's going to step back and reevaluate things because he was close with David Yost. Um, he wants to see what kind of office coordinator Texas Tech is going to bring in. And quite honestly, he's hearing from other schools now. He told 24-7 uh, Sports Director of Recruiting Steve Wilfong that he's hearing from several schools, including some, some Big 12 rivals of Texas Tech, like Texas, TCU, um, Oklahoma State. Uh, basically your primary competition, not only on the gridiron, but certainly uh, on the recruiting trail as well. Um, so that's, that's a very tricky situation. So he still wants to sign during the early period. So by Friday, so he can enroll early. I mean, he's done all, all this hard work to graduate early and enroll, you know, up until recently at Texas Tech. In the spring, so he can go to spring ball, hit the ground running, and have an opportunity for early playing time. So, bottom line is Texas Tech needs to figure some things out. They need to find a way to present things, even if they don't have an offensive coordinator locked up by the time uh, by Friday. To they got to find a way to communicate to Barry Morton that they're going to find somebody that will fit his needs. Um, that is a very tricky situation. I think for those who don't know who quarterback Baron Morton is, uh, he's a four-star recruit. He's one of the highest rated commits. He's the highest rated commit on the commitment list of this class, certainly, but he's one of the highest rated guys you've signed in the last 20 years. Some could argue ever, but certainly, uh, according to 27, uh, 24-7 sports, uh, of the last 20 years. So, You'd hate to lose a talent in such a critical position as Barrett and Morton um, due to this coaching change. I'm not saying they shouldn't have made a coaching change to keep a recruit, but uh, that would be, you know, some uh, something difficult to bounce back from in this recruiting class. And not to mention, let's just face it, there's a big need at quarterback so uh, on this roster. So that would be difficult. But there are nine guys who I do expect to sign on – uh, Wednesday, and so I'm going to go through them real quick. I've double checked even the offensive guys. Uh, I've caught with almost everyone, uh, even the offensive guys. In spite of Coach Yost being dismissed as offensive coordinator, they still are, are going to sign on Wednesday. So let's start off with Cameron Valdez, uh, borderline almost a four-star uh, running back out of Rockdale, Texas. Very prolific. Uh, brings a little bit of everything to the table. Uh, 
high end speed, great change of direction. He can run with power when he chooses to. Um, he's definitely big enough to do that. So I, he's one of the best running backs that Texas Tech has signed in some time. So I'm really excited about him. Uh, he's said that he's going to sign. Durant Bradley is a 6'5 receiver out of DeSoto, also a borderline four-star guy, very highly rated guy, several offers around the country. He confirmed with me on Tuesday he is signing with Texas Tech. So that's huge news. I mean, he is exactly what you're looking for in terms of a receiver at Texas Tech. There's a couple of tight ends I want to mention. Uh, one is Jed Castles out of Wichita Falls Rider. He confirmed also on Tuesday that he is signing. Um, 6'7", 215, can run like a deer. Actually played some outside receiver for Ryder, so he's very athletic. I really like him. Uh, Mason Thorpe is the other uh, uh, tight end. He's, you know, he's out of climb. He, uh, you know, He's a little bit thicker uh, in terms of bigger already. Uh, he was already listed like 225, 230, listed at 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, so he's just a monster. Really like him. Um, and he is, plans on signing with Texas Tech as well. Two offensive linemen. Jack Tucker's already announced, even since Coach Yost was uh, dismissed or fired, uh, that, that he is going to sign. He's a highly rated guy. He committed to Tech relatively early uh, in the spring. Um, he's a guy that... Um, Teams like Baylor, Oklahoma State, all those uh, in-conference in rivals really wanted, but you uh, still landed him. So that he was a huge get out of Argyle there. He needs to add some weight, but uh, the talent is undeniable. One guy who doesn't really need to add any weight is Jacoby Jackson, 6'6", uh, six, 320 pounds, just a really large human being out of Mansfield Summit. This guy chose Texas Tech over 40 other offers, and he's even a TC Legacy and still chose the Red Raiders. So big get there. Those are the offensive guys. On the other side of the ball, you have some defensive linemen that I really like, starting with Amarian Banks, also out of Wichita Falls, Ryder, just as Jed Castles, the tight end I mentioned earlier. You know, he's like 6'4", 260, really big athletic guy. Um, once again, a guy who had like 30 other offers, including several in-state uh, or in-conference in uh, teams. He chose the Red Raiders instead. Really excited about him. Charles Estridge doesn't have quite the offer sheet, but he hails from Cedar Hill, one of the top programs uh, in Texas and in the country. And he's been very productive as a defensive end. Uh, he's not quite as big as Marion Banks, but you know, 6'3", 230, 240. He's the perfect example of a guy who once he gets to campus, he's going to be able to uh, put on a lot of weight in a hurry. Uh, so I really like him. Isaac Smith is another guy really excited about. Um, the thing about him is he's considered the reach of the class so far, but he's 6'5", 230, and he's one. Of, he's going to be one of the fastest guys on the team. He's a track guy uh, from Wagner, Oklahoma, a very, very good program there. Um, the guy is, I, I really think he's either going to be like an all Big 12 guy or a guy we don't really hear about. I mean, I, I think he's a boomer, but classic boomer bust situation. And I think he's going to be a really good player. I really do. I like Isaac Smith a lot. You watch his tape, uh, there's a lot to get excited about with, with Isaac Smith. So those are the guys I expect to sign with Texas Tech on Wednesday. They're not done. They're going to keep recruiting. Now, one thing I want to keep in mind when people are talking about all the numbers, you know, the fact that Tech's class is ranked only number 72 in the country because so few numbers. One thing to think of is there's like about a handful to a half a dozen guys that played this last season that count towards this initial counter list or 25 scholarship limit. So really what you're talking about is around 16, 17 guys already counted for or scholarships counted for. So that leaves another handful to sign in February during the regular period and then a couple for some grad transfers which you know Texas Tech is, wanna, is gonna wanna utilize. They're gonna wanna hit the transfer portal hard. It should be a really active year in the transfer portal, so our off season. So that's where Texas Tech stands going into National Signing Day. Of course, I'll have a video after National Signing Day with any of the surprises. There always seems to be one surprise here or there, something crazy happened. And uh, of course, I'll, I'll be at the press conference with Matt Wells, uh, or at least virtually via Zoom on Wednesday. And I'll have a report from that all that stuff in a video on Wednesday. So with that, I want to thank you for watching and until next time.